Welcome to Hurry Up Pinball, the show where I teach you how to work on your pinball machine. Today I will show you how to install Pinwolfer's JJP Knockout Plus Kit. So grab your tools and let's get going. Here you can see the items that come in the Pinwolfer Knockout Plus Kit. The kit includes the Knockout Plus Amp, an optional add-on amp mounting bracket with hardware, a wiring harness, a power board, zip ties, speaker connectors, two Pinwolfer tweeters, an 8-inch cabinet speaker and hardware, an injection molded speaker ring, and some anti-rattle tape. For detailed installation instructions, go to pinwolfer.com, create an account, select downloads, then pick your system from the list. To begin this installation, Move your pinball machine so you have access to both sides of the pinball cabinet. Then open the coin door, remove the lockdown bar, and remove the playfield glass. Before beginning any work, be sure to unplug the pinball machine. If you have cabinet protectors, go ahead and install them at this time. Then open the coin door, grab the back box keys, and remove the trans light. With the trans light removed, Raise the playfield and rest it on the end of the support brackets. Next, grab the pinwolf or wiring harnesses seen here, and starting with the end that has the 6-pin Molex connector, feed the wiring harness through the hole in the bottom right of the back box. You want to leave about 3 feet of excess cable available to make connections in the back box. Now place a small towel or blanket on top of the back box and fully raise the playfield. Next, open the coin door and feed the end of the wiring harness down the right side of the pinball cabinet and out the coin door. Now lower the playfield and rest it on the end of the support brackets. Now we need to gain access to the back box. Grab the edges of the monitor and gently pull forward to remove it from the magnetic mounts, then position it to the left side. If your machine has an LED strip attached to the metal cover to the CPU enclosure, unplug the Molex connector, as this will allow you to completely remove the CPU cover. Remember to separate the two using the Molex connector and do not pull on the wires. If you have a topper installed, unplug the Molex connector at this time. Then take your magnetic hex driver and remove the four screws holding on the cover. Now it is time to install the Pinwolfer power board on connection J110 as seen here. If you currently have a connector on J110, remove it and connect it to the corresponding pins on the Pinwolfer power board. Grab the two pin connector from the wiring harness you previously installed and plug it into the Pinwolfer board. This connection will supply power to the amplifier. Now plug the Pinwolfer power board into the back box board at J110. Here is how it should look when properly installed. Now it is time to connect the ground wire from the power board. Move the monitor to the right side of the cabinet. Here you can see where the ground wire from the power board needs to be installed. Use your hex driver to remove the board screw. Place it in the eyelet of the ground wire, then reinstall the board screw. Here is how it should look when properly installed. At this time, reposition the monitor to the left side of the cabinet. Next, we need to connect the 3.5mm TRS cable to the ground loop isolator in the back box. My ground loop isolator was located in the back right corner of the back box, about halfway up. Unplug the 3.5mm cable that leads to the soundboard and is connected to the ground loop isolator. Then plug in the 3.5mm cable from the Pimwolfer wiring harness. Use the existing wire looms to tidy up the loose cable. Here is how it should look when properly installed. Now it is time to plug the speakers into the Pinwolfer wiring harness. The JJP soundboard can vary depending on which game you have, so be sure to note the location of the sub, left, and right connectors as screened on the soundboard. Also make note of the corresponding wire color. After noting the connector's designation, 
unplug the connectors and plug them into the corresponding cable from the Pinwolfer wiring harness. Sub to sub, right to right, and left to left. Here is a picture of the power cable for the old soundboard. At this time, you can unplug the power cable to the soundboard as it is no longer needed. With the wiring harness plugged into the speakers, use the included zip ties to tidy up the cables in the back box. Make sure to secure the wiring harness cables to the wire loom in the bottom right of the back box as seen here. I would also recommend using a zip tie or two to secure the amp power cable that is coming off of the power board at J110. Again, make sure to secure the Pinwolfer wiring harness to the wire loom in the bottom right corner of the back box using a zip tie. Here is where you should secure the Pinwolfer wiring harness to the wire loom. Next, reach down into the pinball cabinet and after ensuring about a foot of slack and the wiring harness cable between the back box and cabinet zip tie point, secure the wiring harness to the wire loom in the cabinet. This step is critical to ensure you can raise and lower the back box without pulling on the wiring harness and connection points. Here you can see the wire loom I used to zip tie the Pinwolfer wiring harness to the pinball cabinet. Before replacing the CPU cover, feed the old stock 3.5mm cable that was plugged into the ground loop isolator back into the CPU case, then use a zip tie to secure it. Make sure the old 3.5mm connector is not touching any of the electronics in the CPU case. With the cables cleaned up, clip the excess zip tie material off, then reinstall the CPU enclosure cover. Make sure you do not pinch any cables when reinstalling the cover. If you disconnected a back box LED light strip earlier, go ahead and reconnect it at this time, along with the topper connector if you have a topper installed. With the CPU enclosure work done, go ahead and put the monitor back into its original position. Be sure not to pinch the topper cables in the monitor arm. Next, it is time to install the tweeters. To begin, unplug the two Molex connectors leading to the right and left tweeters as seen here. These connectors are hard to see and are located behind the magnet for the bigger back box speakers. Make sure to pull on the connectors and not the wires. With the tweeters unplugged, it is now time to remove the speaker cover. To do this, you will need either a T15 or T20 Torx bit to remove the two screws seen here. On occasion, these screws may be security Torx bit screws with a raised center. If you do not have the appropriate bit, they can be found on Amazon or at your local hardware store. Go ahead and remove the key at this time. Use the bit to remove the two screws holding on the cover. Make sure to hold the speaker panel with one hand so it does not fall down with the screws removed. Gently remove the cover and try to avoid scratching the inside of the back box. Now grab a towel or blanket and lay the speaker panel face down on top of it. Lay out the tweeters as well. Now grab a Phillips screwdriver and remove the four screws holding on the stock tweeter. Next, grab the new Pinwolfer tweeter and install it using the hardware you just removed. Make sure the marking hole on the new tweeter faces the closed part of the speaker panel and the scalloped part of the new tweeter faces the open end of the speaker panel. Make the screws snug, but do not over tighten them. Repeat this process for the other tweeter. Here is how the two tweeters should look when properly installed. With the new tweeters installed on the speaker panel, Feed the tweeter Molex connectors back through the holes in the back box and then reinstall the speaker panel using the Torx screws. Make sure you do not pinch any cables when reinstalling the speaker panel. At this time, reconnect the Molex connectors from the pinball machine to the new tweeters you just installed. At this time, reinstall the back box key and turn it to the unlocked position. Reinstall the trans light Remove the back box keys and place them back on the hook inside the coin door. Now it is time to install the cabinet speaker, 
So go ahead and completely raise the play field. Use a set of wire cutters to clip the two wires leading to the cabinet speaker, then take your hex driver and remove the nuts holding on the speaker. Remove the stock speaker, the wood square, and the metal grill. Pinwolfer recommends removing the metal grill as it can rattle after installing the Pinwolfer kit. Since the grill is stapled in, you may need to use a flathead screwdriver to remove the staples for the grill. If you break any staples when removing them, use a pair of pliers to remove the broken staples from the bottom of the pinball cabinet. Next, grab the injection molded speaker ring and install it using the provided 3 quarter inch screws. Make sure the ring is snug but do not over tighten the screws. Now grab the pinwolfer speaker and install it on the speaker ring as seen here. Hold the speaker with two hands and carefully line it up with the threaded posts so as not to puncture the speaker. Using the supplied hardware, place a washer and lock nut on each post and tighten them down. Make sure the speaker is snug but do not over tighten the nuts. Next, it is time to install the connectors on the red and black wires you clipped off of the stock cabinet speaker. Use wire strippers and remove about 3 16 of an inch of sheathing. Place a red connector on the red wire and a blue connector on the black wire. Crimp the wires onto the connector and make sure they are snug. With the connectors added to the wires, connect the black wire to the negative terminal on the speaker and the red wire to the positive terminal on the speaker. It is a good idea to hold the speaker terminal so you do not put too much pressure on it. Here is how it should look when properly installed. Make sure to secure the wires using the nearby wire loom. Now it is time to install the amp bracket and the amp. The amp bracket can be installed using the supplied hardware or with Velcro straps. I chose to install the amp bracket using Velcro straps. If you mount the bracket with Velcro straps, make sure to remove the amp prior to transporting the pinball machine. Pinwolfer recommends against mounting the amp to the side of the pinball cabinet. Here is what it should look like when properly installed. Now take the Knockout Plus amp and place it in the amp bracket with the knobs facing the left side of the cabinet. Now plug in the six pin connector from the Pinwolfer wiring harness to the amp. The lip on the connector should be facing up when it is plugged in. Then plug in the 3.5 millimeter cable to input and the power cable as seen here. Here is how the amp should look when properly connected. At this time, go ahead and tidy up the wiring harness cable and place it on the right side of the pinball cabinet. Make sure the harness does not get hung up on anything in the cabinet. With the speakers and amp installed, completely lower the playfield, then remove the towel and cabinet protectors if you used them. Next, we will be installing the anti-rattle tape. Before installing the tape, Use the appropriate cleaner for your glass and make sure the edges of the glass are nice and clean. This will help with the adhesion of the anti-rattle tape. Grab the supplied anti-rattle tape and cut it to length minus about a quarter inch on both ends. Line up the tape and install it flush with the edge of the glass. Repeat this process for the other side. With the anti-rattle tape installed, Reinstall the playfield glass and lockdown bar, open the coin door, then remove the amp from the mounting bracket and place it on the playfield glass. Make sure all the knobs on the amp are set to the 12 o'clock position. Pull the white pin out on the inside of the coin door to allow high voltage to flow under the playfield with the coin door open. Then plug the pinball machine back in and turn it on. With the pinball machine turned on, Set the coin door volume to 30. At this time, double check that the knobs on the amp are set to the 12 o'clock position, then start playing a game and tweak the knobs to your liking. Remember to set the coin door volume around 30 before adjusting the settings on the amp. For recommended amp settings, be sure to check the Pinwolfer blog. If you find a setting you really like, 
be sure to share it with others by uploading it to the Pinwoofer blog. With the installation complete, place the amp back into the mounting bracket, close the coin door, and push the pinball machine back into its original position if you previously moved it. Be sure to play a few test games to double check your work. This is Craig with Hurry Up Pinball, and I wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, show your support for Hurry Up Pinball and click the subscribe button. We can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under Hurry Up Pinball.